Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's worthy of all the honor. He's worthy of all the praise. He's worthy of our singing. He's worthy of our adoration. He's worthy, amen. His name alone is worthy to be blessed. Hallelujah. The Bible says, amen, that the four beasts and the 24 elders all surround the throne, casting down their starry crowns, saying, worthy is the lamb who's worthy to be praised. You ought to come on, get God a great big hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. You got to excuse me, amen, but I come to have church this morning. Hallelujah. Been through too much, just seen too much, amen. Went through too much this week. I got a praise, amen, needs to get out. He's worthy. Somebody say he's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. If it wasn't for the Lord on your side, you might not know this. Amen. But let me remind you, if it wasn't not for the Lord on your side, we wouldn't be here this morning. Hallelujah. The accident didn't take you out. The drugs didn't take you out. All of the stuff that the enemy had for us didn't take us out. And who knew that today we'd be in the house of the Lord? I can't act like I was going to be in church all my life. There was a time in my life I didn't know I was going to be here. Amen. Hallelujah. Look at me now. Amen. Saved. Amen. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Saved and clothed in my right mind, tell. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Got, got God on my side. and got heaven in my view. Amen. I was too mean to live and wasn't in no shape to die. But Jesus. Ha ha. Jesus met me. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. You be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be a sophisticated. No, I'm, I apologize. Amen. Welcome to Equipped and Destiny Church. We're the church of growth, service, and community impact. My name is Bishop Eddie Gross. And for all of you who are watching us by live stream, I want to say to you, welcome this morning. You are not with us this morning by happenstance, but you are with us because of the divine providence of the Lord. And that God saw fit that you and I on this day would be together. Amen. And worship the wonderful and matchless name of Jesus. And so we welcome all of you who are watching us by live stream. And all of you who are with us today, amen, all of our visitors, come on, equip for Destiny Church. Let's give it up for our visitors today. Amen. Hallelujah. We want to thank you also for your obedience. We want to thank you for being here today and thank you for allowing God to lead you uh, with us today. Amen. As we uh, worship Jesus. And so uh, we want to say to you, welcome. If this is your first time here, don't worry. I ain't going to ain't gonna put the spotlight on you this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. But if it's your first time with us, amen, we invite you to fill out a connection card before you leave today. If you don't have one, someone will get one uh, to you. And uh, that just helps us to help stay connected with you so you can know all of the wonderful things that's going on here at this church. Amen. We are a small church with a big vision. Oh, somebody small church with a big vision and so uh, we want you to know that we are uh, glad that you're here and uh, and we welcome you and also if this is not your first time amen, praise the lord I want you to know we got some volunteer opportunities as well don't Amen. We got some volunteer opportunities. Amen. So you can come help us do, amen, what God has called us to do. And and, and here's what God has called us to do. Amen. Is to bring a fresh wind to Nightdale. Can I get an amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that's the mission of this church. Amen. Our mission uh, is to grow disciples. Amen. To grow deeper in our knowledge, in our service, in our community impact. And so that's why we're here. If you're wondering why another church, Bishop, amen, uh, we, we're here because God has called us, amen, to turn the winds around uh, in Wake County. So we thank you. Amen. For that. Now, before I get into my message, I just want to let you know something real quickly. And uh, we, we'll, we'll jump into the word. Uh, you already had the scripture read in your hearing, so you ought to be ready. You ought to be ready. Where were where, where we today? What, where we, say it with me. Where are we? Psalm number one. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody's paying attention. All right. But before we get into the word, I just want to say, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen today. Here's what's going to happen. Right. At the conclusion of this message. Right. I'm going to give you an opportunity. And so the opportunity I'm going to give you at the end of this message is, one, to join God's family. Amen. If you're not saved, you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then guess what? Amen. Today is a wonderful day. Amen. To, to handle that business. Can I get an amen? All right. And secondly, we're going to give you an opportunity to join our family. Amen. Because we're a family uh, within a family. You know how you got cousins on one side of the family and Right. So we're in God's family, but we're, we're just we're a small community inside the larger family. And so we'll be giving you an opportunity to join with us as well. Uh, and finally, we'll give you an opportunity to connect with us. We'll talk more about volunteer opportunities and more information concerning the ministry. All right. Let's go very quickly. Amen. I want to get through this. I, I, I need to move a little quickly. Amen. Psalms number one, verses one through three. 
Amen. Psalms number one, verses what? One through, say it with me, three. Amen. Praise God. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Uh, that's the standard version for the house. Amen. Praise the Lord. But you may be reading from some other translation, but we will arrive at the same destination. Psalms number one, verses one through three. The Bible reads, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Say that with me, nor sits in the seat of the what? scornful but his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law he meditates day and night he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season whose leaf also shall not wither and whatever he does shall prosper give me a little bit on the monitor amen praise the lord hallelujah as my wife mentioned we've been in the midst of a series uh, we've been talking about the seven people that you need in order to take your uh, life to the next level. Uh, and this, uh, the good news is that this is the uh, conclusion of this message. This is message number seven in this series. I mean, praise the Lord. And um, and so we'll start a new series on next week. On next week, we're going to be talking about a man going to be talking about the order of the kingdom. Somebody say order of the kingdom. Amen. Praise the Lord. You don't want to miss that. Amen. And so and so in our conclusion of this uh, uh, series, we're going to be talking today about the critic. Amen. Talking about the critic. Um, I, I want to start this message by just uh, doing a little defining. Um, uh, we were always taught in seminary. The one thing that you want to do is you want to always define to your people any concept that you're trying to teach. So today we're teaching about the critic. So what is a critic? What exactly is a critic? So so. This Psalm number one, which parenthetically is one of my favorite Psalms, uh, this this Psalm this starts out making this declaration. And he says, bless. I might say bless. He says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. And that word bless, amen, means happy is he. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so the psalm that starts out giving us the condition of this man saying that this man is blessed. Can you say it with me? Bless. And so I want to call your attention to uh, uh, these three particular people that he talks about. He talks about the ungodly. Say it with me, the ungodly. He talks about the sinner. Say it with me, the sinner. But he talks about the scornful. And it's the scornful I want to talk about today. And so then what is a critic? The Bible says, he says he does not sit in the seat of the, say it with me, scornful, the contempt, uh, 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 contemptuous, the disdainful, the insulting, the disrespectful. He says he doesn't sit with people who exhibit a lack of respect. He don't he doesn't deal with rude people. Come on, somebody. Amen. And the discourteous. So when he talks about uh, uh, the scornful, he he's talking about people with an attitude. He's he's talking about people, amen, who who have a, a, a not so good disposition. He he's talking about people who ain't got nothing good to say. Is this thing on? Y'all hear me today? He's talking about people, amen, that can't find any good in anything anybody does. You don't know nobody like to hear. I'm talking about the church down the street. Amen. People, amen, who 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 you will say good morning and they grunt back at you. Y'all Amen. Somebody say the scornful. And so the scornful is another name for the critic, man. And so the scornful are extreme critics who are extremely critical. A critic finds fault with everything, everybody. Amen. Especially with those things that pertain to God. Can I get an amen? Ah, hold me, hold me, go. Say amen. Praise the Lord. They, they don't like the church. Amen. They don't like church folk. They praise the Lord. They, they don't like you Christians. Amen. Because they say y'all ain't nothing but a bunch of hypocrites. Y'all ain't talking to me. They say y'all say one thing and do another. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. Mama, when when, when a preacher falls, amen, and gets and gets uh, uh, uh whose whose who's bad dealings get revealed, they say, see, that's why I don't go to church. See, that's why I don't fool with church folk. And so, and so every time they get an opportunity, Sheldon, to throw some shade at the church, they do it because they're critics. Somebody say critics. 
I ain't got all day, so you may well come on, go with me. Watch this now. And so it's so all critic finds fault with everybody. There's negative. Somebody say negative. They're fault finding. Somebody say fault finding. And the Bible calls them the scornful. Can you say amen to this? Now, now here's some indicators of when you got a critical spirit. Now, I'm going to tell you this so you can help somebody else. Here's some indicators when you got a critical spirit. Write this now. When you don't know the difference between the spirit of discernment and the spirit of criticism. See, a lot of what folk call discernment really ain't nothing but a critical spirit. Uh-huh. What do you mean by that, Bishop? Because discernment, watch this now, discernment waits for the information to come to them. And then through the filter of the Holy Spirit, they'll determine whether or not what they are looking at, seeing, or hearing is from the Lord. Can I get amen? Let me give you a scripture. Amen. Y'all looking at me strange. The Bible says, watch this now, test every spirit. Amen. He said, don't believe every spirit, but test every spirit to see what, what type of spirit that it may be. That's discernment. Discernment is, I'm going to take what you give, but I'm going to judge it, amen, according to God's word and according to what the Holy Spirit says in my ear. Can I get amen? Amen. Somebody say, that's discernment. Now, now the problem is that some folk confuse discernment with, with, with a critical spirit because a critical spirit finds fault. Watch this now. A, a critical spirit looks for fault and don't wait for the fault to come to him. In other words, when you got a critical spirit, amen, praise the Lord, I don't like you because you got on that black that black sweater. I, I don't like folk with black sweaters. I feel some kind of way about folk with black sweaters. And so all I'm going to do is wait for you to say the wrong thing, do the wrong thing, amen, show up the wrong way. And I go, see, the Lord, I felt something in my spirit. The Lord told me, amen, amen, to watch him. Amen, praise the Lord. And and, and, and the Lord told me, y'all look to me like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Y'all know them people, amen, uh, that the Lord told them and the Lord revealed to me and the Lord said to me amen I knew something was wrong with that brother with that black sweat on with that cross around his neck that's a critical spirit discernment waits for the brother to do something and then let the Holy Spirit be his judge but the critical spirit judges him first and then put God's name on it you all to say amen up in here I'm almost done watch this now and so and so and so the Bible tells us amen that a spirit of criticism overlooks all that's good and finds the fault. You don't know nobody like that, do you? Amen. That that all that can happen, they're going to point out the one thing didn't go right. Amen. Praise the Lord. The poor waitress doing the best they can, amen, to serve you, amen. And, and, and you just, ah, yeah, but they just took too long. Took too long to bring me some water. They, they, they took too long. How's the food? Ah, it was all right. It was all right. It was all right. Right. Critical spirit, right? And so critical spirit going to find something wrong with anything. They're going to find something wrong with anybody. I don't care how well it's put together. I don't care, man, how well the program is, is coordinated. They're going to find something wrong with it because they have a critical spirit. Somebody ought to say amen up in here. Amen, amen. And, and, and watch this now. Ain't, ain't nobody like to hear talk about church down the street. You know, church folk could be like that too. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, you know. It's Holy Ghost fall in this place, amen. It's hot. It's hot up in here, amen. The Lord, I mean, the Spirit of the Lord is here, and they go, but they're taking too long. <laughs> Leave all this, I get in trouble. Watch this now. So, so they find something wrong. They find something wrong. In Acts chapter 3, the Bible tells me, watch this now, that Peter and John went to the temple about the ninth hour to pray. And the word said, amen, they saw a man that was lame, amen, from his mother's womb. Amen. They encountered this man, and through the miraculous power of the Holy Ghost, they said, amen, silver and gold have we none, but what we do have we give to you. And he said, rise up and walk. Come on, somebody. And the Bible say, amen, that the man grained strength in his ankles, and, 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 and the man that was lame now shouting. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Amen. The man, amen, who used to be, amen, a drug addict is shouting. The man, amen, used to be a whoremonger shouting. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the scripture said he went to church. See, see, that's when you know you've been redeemed and God has done something for your life. He went to church, amen, with them. And the scripture says that these these Pharisees, amen, watch this now, was more concerned with the theology than they was the healing of the man. 
uh-huh, uh-huh. That not once in scripture did they say, oh, by the way, how, how, how's the lame man doing? No, no, no. They said, by what name, amen, did you heal this man? See, a critical spirit, amen, is going to look for something to complain about. Even when the hand of God is on it, they'll find something to complain about. Can I get an amen? Ah, and so, and so, and so, and so, and so these critics came. Amen. Fault finding Pharisees. Ain't nobody like that here. I'm talking about down the street. Fault finding Pharisees. Amen. That'll find something wrong. They'll look for something wrong. They're going to turn over every rock till they find something wrong. And if they can't find nothing, amen, they're going to they gonna, they gonna, they gonna get together and say, not, not, not. What you think? What you think, Miss Denise? Amen. Prayer. If I can't find nothing, I'm going to find somebody who got something. What What you say, Miss Denise? What What you think about it? What What would you heard something? What, what did somebody say something to you? Give me something because I'm looking for something to criticize. Uh, preach bishop, amen. So, 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 watch this now. So, 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 they look for stuff. Somebody said they look for stuff. Yes, hold me up, hold the ghost. And so, you got to deal, amen, with these critics. Because let me tell you something the reason we got to deal with them is because until you know how to deal with the critic, amen, they are hinder you from your destiny. Until you know how to deal with criticism, am I preaching good up here today? Until you know how to deal with the critic, amen, that he will interfere with your walk with the Lord. Can I get amen? Here's the spirit of criticism. Three things they after. This is not my points. Watch this now. You can always recognize a critical, a person with a critical spirit because the critic always wants to cause injury. Somebody say injury. These are direct attacks on you for who you are in the kingdom. They don't like you. They ain't going to like you. They never did like you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. When you come into the boardroom, you come into the meeting room, they stop talking because they don't, they, don't, they don't like you. Amen. Can I get amen? They say mean and hurtful things. Can I get amen here? Amen. These people are vicious and intimidating. These are the type of people that when you call yourself a Christian, amen, they're going to light into you and light into you quickly. Amen. Can I get Amen. Amen. You step outside, amen, with a Jesus T-shirt if you want to. Amen. Praise the Lord. They're very vocal about their disdain for God and for the kingdom. Amen. They want to injure. Somebody say injure. Also, the critic wants to cause confusion. Somebody say confusion. These critics like to muddy the waters with a lot of irrelevant details. Oh, I'm preaching good whether well, you know it or not. These, these, these critics, man, won't talk about that. Now, now, when you guys say it, will you say the Jesus name? Or do you say, will you say the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost? Because if you want to save it, you want to save the name of Jesus, you ain't really saved. You got to go back and be saved again. The, 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 these critics like to throw a lot of information, a lot. I did my research. I went on Google, and what I found out is see, see tithe in this old testament. That stuff all done away with. They don't do that no more. They are trying to confuse you with a bunch of information so that you don't really know which way you supposed to go. You don't really know what you're supposed to lead, believe. And if you listen to them long enough, amen, they'll have you where you ain't coming to church no more. Y'all ain't talking to me. Can I get amen? They like to overwhelm you. Keep you in a place of where you trying to prove something. Y'all not talking to me. Amen. Well, 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 yeah, well if it's a God, then, then, then tell me this. Amen. Well, if there's a Lord, then tell me this. Well, if Jesus did this, then tell me this. And you keep telling them. You keep telling them. You keep telling them. Oh, y'all ain't going to help me up in here. You keep telling them. You keep telling them. You keep begging. You keep showing them. And here it is, amen, five years later, they still, amen, don't believe. Can I get amen? Huh? They want to confuse you. And also, you got the critic that want to cause discouragement. Oh, hold me up, Holy Ghost. Uh, the critic, some critics like to cause discouragement. I'm going to tell you how they do it. Watch this now. And when I tell you this, I'm going to pass the offering plate because you're going you're gonna to want to bless me like this. Right there. The, the critic that likes to cause discouragement, these are the critics that don't say nothing. Mm. Mm. So I say, Priest Bishop, they don't say nothing, First Lady. They watch your Facebook post, huh? And then, and then they don't say nothing. One part, one person in the family, amen, tripped over a stick and found a job, amen. And now they hallelujah, oh, man, that's my, that's my boy right there, that's my, but yeah, amen, praise the Lord. But you do something. Oh, 
Oh, I just graduated. Uh, 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 was it Kuma what? What is the term? Kuma Mag what? Magna Cum Laude. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know I didn't get that one. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Magna Cum Laude. Watch this now. You done all of that. You standing there. Amen. In your robe. You standing there. Amen. Get it. And they will say nothing. And so, and so there's the critics that like to discourage you by saying nothing. Oh, hold me up, Holy Ghost. You know, we preachers, we bad about that. Amen. Amen. We don't want to give no bless. We don't want to give no, sh- we don't want to give no uh, 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 accolades to another preacher. And so, and so we just won't say nothing. Oh, hold me up, Holy Ghost. I, I, I'm walking up here this morning. So watch this now. So, so, so we got to learn how to deal with the critic. Because if you're going to get to the destiny that God has for you, you got to learn how to deal with some criticism. Amen. I'm talking to these people over here in the back over here. If you're going to get to where God is going to take you, you must understand and know how to deal with your Critics. Somebody say critics. Point number one. How do you deal with your critics? One, release them. Somebody say release them. Psalm number one said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Watch this now. Nor stands in the path of sinners. Don't miss this. Nor sits. Somebody say sits. Nor sits. Say it one more time. Nor sits. In the seat of the scornful. That word sit means not just to be in the company of, but it also means to be in agreement with. See, when you sit with somebody, amen, that means you're in agreement with them. That suggests intimacy. It it suggests, amen, a kindred spirit. It, 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 It suggests a connection. Can I get amen? And the Bible says that the reason this man is blessed because he doesn't waste his time sitting with his critics. Can I get amen? Oh, I'm coming through today. I got a question. I got a question. How many of us are spending way too much time sitting with our own critics? Can I get amen? How, how many of us, how many of us still breaking bread? Come on, somebody. Y'all ain't going. How, how many of us breaking bread with folk we know don't even like us? You know they don't like you. You know they don't like you. You know they don't talk to you. You know they only deal with you because they have to. I wish I had some real folk up in this church today. They only call you when they need something. And if they don't need anything, they don't call. You don't hear from them. They don't even know your name until it's convenient for them. Come on, somebody. Can I get amen? Somebody say folk don't even like you. Don't won't take the time. They don't know your birthday. Amen. They don't know your anniversary date. Praise the Lord. They don't know none of your children's name. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here. Don't know your husband's name. Ain't took the time to find out nothing about you. They don't like you. And so we spend too much time sitting with our own critics. Can I go on? Can I preach? How long are we gonna keep? Watch this now. Seeking the approval of people who have already demonstrated they don't approve of us. How long? How long? Critics, how long are we going to keep pining, amen, for the attention of folk who've already demonstrated they ain't going to give it to you? Wow. And, and, and you've done all. You've done all you think you can do. You, you tried to negotiate. You tried to be friends. You done baked a chicken pot pie. You done, you done done put sweet potato pies. You, you done done all of this, right? And you are no closer to being a, I wish I had some help over here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. A friend is somebody, watch this now, who not just approves of you, who takes the time to know something about you. They're interested in your life. They're interested in what's going on with you. Can I help you out for a few minutes? I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this alone. Watch this now. Listen, any person in your life who won't take the time to know you ain't your friend. Mm. 
if somebody on live stream going to get that one. Watch this now. I say they don't approve you. How long are we going to continue the yearning for the acknowledgement of people and you know they're not going to give it to you? How long are we going to keep playing small so that our critics can be comfortable with us? Come on, somebody. I'm, I'm talking to somebody got destiny in them. Huh? I'm talking to somebody got a coal on their lives. How long are you going to keep playing small so small folk can feel comfortable with you? How, how long? How, how long you gonna keep acting like, amen, God's hand ain't on your life, amen, so you don't make somebody else, can I come on this side, amen, praise the Lord. How long you gonna keep acting like, amen, God's hand ain't on your life, so Aunt Lily May, amen, won't, won't lose her nerve. Somebody say you got to release them. And every day you spend with your critics is a day you're not maximizing your destiny. Every day you running behind the approval of somebody else is a day you're not running before the approval of God. Every day, amen, that you're trying to negotiate, befriend, hold on to. Can I, can I bless somebody here today? There are some people in your life you need to release. And in order for you to get to the next place that God has for you, let me help you out, baby. You can't take everybody with you. There are some folk you just got to release. Somebody say release them. And so, and so I don't know about you, but I don't spend all I'm going to spend. Amen. Praise the Lord. If I got to preach, if I got to preach this thing for myself, I listen, I don't spend all of the time I'm going to spend. Amen. Over folk. Amen. Who ain't going nowhere. Can I get amen? I don't have spent all that I'm going to spend. You can check like, don't like. You can give me a frowning face all you want. But let me tell you something. I have spent my last day worrying about somebody who ain't worried about me. Oh, hold me up, Holy Ghost. And so somebody said, you got to release them. You got to release them. And, and, and I, I got to, my wife told me this, and I got to bar it. Amen. Praise the Lord. She said, she told me, she said, she said, baby, don't keep going to Home Depot looking for bagels. Because <laughs> Home Depot don't sell bagels. And if you go to Home Depot the first time looking for bagels, okay, all right, you just, you didn't know. But if you keep coming back, amen, day after day, after day, coming to Home Depot, talking about y'all got any bagels today, something must be wrong with you because Home Depot don't sell bagels. Somebody say you got to release them. Watch this, point number two. Watch this. Not only you got to release them, you got to keep your focus. Somebody say keep your focus. Psalms number one, verse number two says, watch this now. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. I love that word delight. That word delight, amen, in the Hebrew means to find extreme joy in something. It, 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 means, it means fulfillment. That's what it really means. It means completeness. Amen. Praise the Lord. The scripture says, watch this now, that this man, watch this now, is blessed, amen, because he don't seek after the ungodly, the sinner, and the scornful. The Bible said, but he gets his fulfillment, amen, from the law of the Lord. Can I get amen? Uh-huh. And then the scripture says he meditates. Somebody say meditates. Delight, meditates. And so the word says, amen, he meditates on the word. Watch this now, day and when? Night. Say it with me, day and when? Night. Say it one more time, day, night. Now, now, when the scripture talks about day and night, I want to bless you. Anytime you see a scripture where the scripture says things like day or night or heaven and earth, Right. Those are what we call murisms. Murisms are really, in a sense, a way the Hebrew writer says everything without saying everything. See, when the scripture says, watch this now, that God is the Lord of both heaven and earth. He's really talking about all creation. So when the scripture says he meditates day and night, he's not talking about time. What he's saying is he's saying that this man meditates on God's word continually. Meaning God's word is what's important to his life. Can I get amen? Uh-huh. Let me let me let me close this thing. And so, so, so the reason this man is blessed, 
is because he keeps his focus on the things of God. Amen. And he understands that keeping his focus on the things of God keeps him from focusing on something else. Can I get amen right there? Do you know, amen, that what you put your focus on, amen, is going to take priority in your life? Do you know there's a reason why they call it pay attention? Amen. The reason they call it pay attention is because your attention costs you something. Amen. Where you place your focus, amen, is where you're going to get your return. Amen. If you focus on the wrong thing, you're going to get a return from the wrong thing. The Bible says, as a man soweth, so too shall he reap. Be not mocked. And so the scripture says, watch this now, this man's focus, that's my amen right there. Amen. The words what got his focus, amen, is on the word. Can you say amen to this? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So you have to understand, watch this now. That what your critics need the most is your attention. I'll say it again. What your critic wants the most is your attention. Huh? Come on, come on. See, 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 long as you on the phone arguing, talking about something. Come on, y'all been talking about that same thing since 1972, right? Y'all had that same disagreement. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, Y'all got some family members like that. They can't be together 15 minutes. And they're still talking about who wrecked Papa car, right? Right, same thing, right, same thing. Watch this now. And, and, and what the scripture gets us to understand is, amen, that, 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 the, uh, that the critic, what they want the most is your uh, attention. Amen, that, that, they ain't really trying to, they ain't really trying to resolve nothing, Sheldon. They just won't argue. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody know what I'm talking about? They, they ain't really trying to get nowhere with the conversation. They just like seeing you get hot under the collar. Can I get an amen? Huh? Let me tell you how you know this. The reason you know this is because after you got mad, your blood pressure done went up, right? After you done went through all of that, right, you smoking underneath the collar. You go see them 30 minutes later, and they don't forget. They don't forget what y'all were arguing about. Because <laughs> it didn't really mean that much to them. You're the only one. <laughs> they, somebody say they need your attention. So how do you rob the critic of their power in your life? You rob them by staying focused. Somebody say focus. Come on, somebody. How, how you rob them of their power is you say nothing. You, 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 listen, you want to, you want to rob the critic. And when they want to criticize, you you tell them, you can have that. Preach, Bishop. Amen. Just tell them, go ahead. You know what? You right. You know, let, uh, let me apologize. You know what? I thought I was right. You wrong. You can have that. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh -huh. Go ahead. You can have that. Yeah. Right. Uh, you ever agreed with somebody that wanted to argue? Just mess them up. <laughs> right? Yeah, you know, you, you know, you, you're right. You're right. I could have did it better. Thank you. I appreciate that. Right? You rob them of their power by staying focused. Can I get amen? Somebody say focused. And so, and so, John ten and ten. I'm almost done. John 10 to 10 said, the thief comes not except to steal and to what? Kill and to what? Destroy. Jesus said, I have come that, that you may have life. Come on, somebody. That you may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. And so, and so how the enemy robs us, how he steals from us. How he destroys is by taking our focus off of what we should have our focus on, running behind something, amen. Come on, somebody, that we don't need to be running behind. Can I get amen? Oh, y'all ought to help me preach it here. I heard there's a man by the name of Nehemiah that God sent back to, be, to rebuild the walls of, of Jerusalem. And the Bible says, amen, that when Nehemiah got the wall up, 
Oh, uh, y'all ain't gonna help me today, man. Well, he well, he got the wall up, amen. Because you know, you know, if you ever seen construction when they first start construction, it don't look like much going on. All you see is them clearing out the land. All you see is just some old trees knocked down. But but after a while, amen, things start taking shape. It's going to bless you in a minute. Amen. After a while, you see some two by fours going up. You, you start seeing you start seeing a foundation being laid. You, you start seeing them putting things together. And so what happens is, watch this now, there are some people who ain't got no problem with what you're doing as long as everything looks like it ain't going nowhere. But as soon as they see, amen, a foundation laid, as soon as they see you going somewhere, as soon as they see God's hand upon your life, then here come the shade. And so, and so Nehemiah, when he start getting the wall up, amen, folks start talking. People start criticizing. They, they start talking about, well, what, 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 what they doing? What they trying to do what? They're trying to build a wall. Who are they to try to build a wall? They don't know nothing about building no wall. Amen. Praise the Lord. And who building a wall anyway? Nehemiah. Nehemiah? Man, please. I know Nehemiah. I know that dude. They don't know nothing about. Man, you ain't got to worry about that wall. They ain't going to stand up long. Amen. Praise the Lord. They criticized it. But watch this, though. But what Nehemiah did was he gave a deaf ear to his critics and he kept on working. Hold me up, Holy Ghost. What Nehemiah did was he kept his focus. What Nehemiah did was give no voice to the naysayers and kept his focus on what God had called him to do. Can I get an amen? And, 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 and when that didn't get it, when the criticism didn't get it, they called them for a meeting. Y'all not going to talk to me. That's how you know when you got their attention, when they want to talk to you. Can I, can I get with you for a minute? Can I have a little bit of your time? Hey Amen. I need you to show me how you do what you do. Y'all ain't helping me up here. Can, 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 I, can, can I set a meeting with you? Can, can I learn? How, you know, I show like how you got a lot of followers. Can you tell me how you do that? Can you tell me how to build your business? Can I have a little bit of time? And Nehemiah said, no. I know, I know, y'all, this is a different kind of church up here. I know. Nehemiah said, no. Do you know as a Christian, you can't say there's no such thing as you being a believer. You got to say yes to everything. You need to practice it right here in this sanctuary. Somebody say it with me. No. I said, no. He said, why should I come to you and the work stop? Oh, you won't get that in a minute. Why should I come to you and the what and the work stop? See, everything people calling you to, amen, ain't God. You got to be able to understand. Sometimes it's the enemy trying to call you somewhere else so that the work stops. Can I get amen? Uh, let me close, let me close, let me close. Watch this now. Point number three. Somebody said, trust your source. So verse three, he says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. It brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does, come on, somebody, whatever he does shall prosper. I love, I love how, how the psalmist opens this psalm. He called him a blessed man. And he tells us that he's blessed by what he does not do. And then he tells us, amen, that he's blessed by what he does do. The scripture tells us, amen, that this man, although he got critics, although he has the scornful, although he has the ungodly, even though he got some sinners around him, this man, amen, has the ability to be in the world but not of the world. This man has the ability, amen, to go on his job and represent the kingdom of God. Y'all ain't going to help me. This man has the ability, amen, to be among folk who are not like him and yet not adopt their ways and their habits and their tastes. Can I get amen? The Bible says he's blessed. Somebody say blessed. He's blessed. He's blessed. He's blessed. He's blessed. And so, and so I want you to know today that all of us got some critics. I don't care who you are. I don't care even what you do. I, I don't care what the call is on your life. Everybody got critics. Amen. Can I get amen right there? And the truth of the matter is that some of our critics, amen, we may find them 
out in the marketplace. You may find them on your job. But the truth of the matter is some of our critics is in our own households. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. Amen. We got critics, amen, in our own families. We got, we got critics, amen, that's right among uh, uh, among us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And, and you got to deal with not only the folk, amen, outside, but you got to deal with the critics. Amen. You, you can't go to the barbecue because you got to deal, amen, with a critic. Mm. You can't go to the baby shower, have a good time, because somebody looking at you crazy, somebody that don't like you, somebody, amen, got something to say about you. Can I get amen? And so you got to learn how to deal with the critics, amen, that's external. And you got to learn how to deal with the critics in your family. But let me tell you about some other critic you got to deal with. You got to learn how to deal with the critic that's outside. But sometimes you got to learn how to deal with the critic that's on the inside. Because what the enemy wants to do is to give, make you give so much attention to the critic on the outside that you turn into a critic in your own head. Can I say amen? Yeah, somebody ought to help me preach up in here. And so the Bible says, uh, that watch this now, that this man is blessed uh, because he doesn't allow his critics uh, to get in his head. Uh, he doesn't allow folk uh, to get on his nerves. He, he don't allow folk uh, to get in his business. Uh, he don't allow folk, uh, amen, to turn him around. Uh, he knows who he is, uh, and he knows the call on his life. Uh, he knows uh, that God's got a destiny for him now, uh, and he is going to pursue God's destiny regardless of who goes with him or who does not go with him. He's committed uh, to living his life before the Lord. Uh, and the Bible says uh, because of his commitment, uh, the Bible says whatsoever he doeth prosper. Is this thing on? The Bible says, watch this now, don't miss this. The Bible says that, that his leaf shall not wither. Watch this, and in due season, somebody say due season. Let the critics criticize you in your season. Let them talk about you in this season. But the Bible says, grow not weary and well-doing, for you shall reap in due season if you faint not. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but don't you give up. Don't you give out. And don't you go back because God's got a blessing for you in due season. This might not be my season. I may look a little raggedy right now. Things might not be together, but I'm going to keep on working. I'm going to keep on serving. I'm going to keep on following God. And I don't care who like it or who don't like it. I don't care who approves or who don't approve. I'm going to keep working because I know God has a destiny for my life. What about you? What about you? I know that the day going to come that where I have sold, I'm going to reap. I know I'm going to reap. Because the Bible says God is not mocked whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he reap. And I want you to know today you can't sow and not reap. It ain't possible. It's impossible because God said every seed go in the ground. Every seed that you sow, amen, is going to yield a harvest. Psalm 30, Psalm 60, Psalm 100 fold. But I know that by a shadow of a doubt, I'm going to get mine. Can I get amen? Anybody know what I'm talking about? I know I'm going to get mine. I know God, amen, is going to receive my seed. I know God, amen, is going to bless. I know God's going to move in my life. And so when that little critic get the whispering in my ear, I say, I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. When he say, Bishop, you ain't got enough. I say, I bind that in the name of Jesus. My father is the owner of a cattle of a thousand hills. He said, Bishop, you ain't got the ability. I 
I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Bishop, you ain't got enough finances. Oh, that's not true. God is able to make his grace abound towards me that I can have all sufficiency and all good things and every good work. You got to know how to talk back. Y'all ain't saying nothing, but you got to learn how to talk back. And don't give your critic space in your head. Can I get amen right there? Don't give your critic free rent in your head. If it doesn't line up with what the Word of God says, it ain't true. Can I get amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't care how hard it may be now, but the Scripture tells us that weeping may endure for a night. Come on, somebody. Come on, but a night, but what, but what joy is coming in the morning. And you could very well be just a day away from your blessing. Don't you give up, don't you give out, and don't you go back. For God I live, for God I live, and for God I die. Come on, give God a great big hand clap of praise. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless your name, Jesus.